In this video, we're going to take our hole in one path, and we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem knowledge to find these lengths uh, by creating a bunch of right triangles within our path. Uh, so we're going to treat every piece of the path as a hypotenuse to a right triangle. So essentially, take this length and create a right angle from it. And that's how you create a right triangle. So if I'm creating a right triangle here, I'm going to take my end point, go right to the edge of the ball here, try and keep it parallel as possible with this side length. So these two sides keep them parallel. You could do a dash line or a line, a uh, regular line itself is fine. That's your right angle. Um, so you now need the two legs to find the hypotenuse. And if we can call this, let's say, triangle one, Roman numerals. In order to find the length, you're simply just going to measure these in centimeters. So line up your ruler. And I'm getting... 4.45 or 4.4, 4.5, somewhere around there. Centimeters and measure this. Looks like 3.85. So we just measured the two legs in order to find the hypotenuse. We're going to do some scratch work here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared is our Pythagorean theorem. We'll call 4.5A. We'll call 3.85B. And then C obviously is what we're looking for. So now use your calculator to actually square 4.5. And you get 20.25 plus 3.85 squared, 14.8225. That's an exact answer. Um, combine these two together. So C squared is 35.0725. In order to find just C, the inverse of squaring something is to square root. So we're going to square root both sides. C is going to be approximately 5.92 centimeters. So we're going to go ahead and write that here. And then you continue the process for the rest of the paths. Um, it's the same thing. You measure the legs and calculate the hypotenuse. Um, some students were having trouble with finding how to or how to write out an actual right triangle. Um, you don't need to make two for one hypotenuse. So for this length right here, you could just draw a length there, use this as one of the sides, and call that a triangle. Or you can draw it this way down here and draw a leg here and here and have it meet here to make a right triangle. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Just you don't need to do both. Okay. Um, I find it easier to just use the walls that are given to you as part of the triangle. Less drawing for you, less chance for a mistake. So that could be one triangle for this length here. This corner already gives me a right triangle, so I'm just going to use it. You could draw it out here if you wanted to, does not matter. Now, when you get to this piece here, this is one giant triangle, but it's not one right triangle. So what you're going to do is split this down the middle turn it around for you. You need to draw a right angle essentially down towards the base. You're going to want to do your best to make it parallel. This will be your right angle right here. So now you've created two right triangles, you know, measuring the legs and the leg here, find the hypotenuse. Lastly, uh, when you get to your last triangle, don't put the triangle endpoint in the middle of the hole. 
Make the triangle endpoint right at the edge of the hole. Do your best to make it parallel. And this one's considerably smaller. All right, so that's how you find the right triangles within the path. This is how you calculate using Pythagorean theorem hypotenuse for any given right triangle. Um, as far as measuring goes, if you're trying to measure, I'll try and zoom in on here so you can see what I'm talking about. You know, put that I'm measuring from here to here. It actually this ends up working out pretty well being right at three. So that's not a big deal. Um, let's go over to here maybe as a exa good example. So right here, this is a good example of you know, how to estimate when the length does not actually end in a, a hash mark. So here we're measuring from this point here. Move it over right where that line is at. Make it parallel to the base. So this end point is kind of fuzzy. It could be right in between these two. If it were right in between these two, it'd be 4.12, in between 4.2 and 4.3. We could call that 4.25. As long as you know it's in between two dash marks, um, you can go ahead and just call it, you know, split the difference right in the middle, 4.25. You can't be any more accurate than that, though, with this. Um, so it can either be 4.2, 4.3, or 4.25. It's probably the most accurate way.